So this particular bar for the 12 months of soap gift sets has to be the best one because it's bar six, which means January, February, March, April, May, June. June is my birth month. And so we always super care about things that happen in our birth month, right? And so I want the birth month soap to be the best soap. So this is my hope. This is my thinking. Fingers crossed that I don't mess this one up. I will tell you all about my inspiration and my thought process and what we're doing for the June soap in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 160 of 365 days of soap. Crazy. And today we are doing bar six in the 12 months of soap line. We are doing June. Now, right off the bat, June is scented with a cool, clear water from Nature's Garden because it's like one of my favorite scents in the world. And it's very beachy, really bright, oceany notes, got a little salt mixed in with it. I usually do pair this with a salt bar because that combination is just awesome. But I'm not making a salt bar today. I'm making a regular bar and I am theming it after the beach. So I'm going to do a beach themed soap today. And the reason for that is, well, a lot of reasons. A, June is usually when people go to summer break. School ends, you get to go do fun things. We don't do that, but someday, fingers crossed, we'll get to again. And we, my family, growing up, we would always take a trip down to the south and stay on the Gulf Coast for about two weeks every June. And so beaches and waves and heat and awesome. And so, you know, wanted to sort of nod to that because those were always fun times. My brother and I, I don't think ever, ever spent any amount of time not in our swimming suits, just for those full two weeks. We always had a swimming suit on and it was awesome. And so yeah, beach theme. Let's go to the video and I can talk to you about what I decided to do for this beach theme, how I ultimately accomplished it, and whether or not I like the little shells on top. Yeah, that video was also recorded during the weirdness of video and trying to figure out HDR. Also, I gave you a very small snapshot of what it is that we are doing. We are doing a beach scene, you guys, because it's June, and this is what we do. And we are using peacock and Tahitian teal, as well as another color. I did not show you the design page long enough for you to get any idea of what it is that we are doing. And I think I showed you Goldfinger as well, that we are going to use for the bottom base sand portion and the mica lines inside really and this does have some soap nuts in it because i am putting in an exfoliant and so i did want to make sure that the lather had a little bit of an extra boost and so we did some infused waters with soap nuts thus the the strainer really and the scent that we are going with for this is a dupe of cool water called Cool Clear Water from Nature's Garden. That thing is strong as shit in all bars of soap, salt bars, regular bars, all of the things, bar bars, you know. And I ended up making, the reason I put this in is because A, it's a beach theme, and so that totally works. 
two, I am discontinuing the Game of Soaps line. And that was the only bar that I ever consistently, that was the only bar that I made in my personal line using this ever. And so I'm sad. It was the Clean Joy, by the way. And so I'm sad that I'm not going to be making it all the time anymore. But, you know, I'm getting rid of Game of Soaps. Temporarily. The new, the new, like, not episode, not even season, the new thing, show. We call it a show when it's something new, but it's a spinoff of something else. You know, the new dragon thing. That's coming out on HBO soon, right? So, yeah, we will have more Game of Soapiness soon, for sure. But for right now, I was big bummed that I was not going to make this anymore for my personal line. But see, I have like, I don't know, 20 wholesale accounts right now that use this religiously. We're also putting pumice sand in it because it's sand beach. Yeah, they use this religiously in their lines. Not this design, not the Clean Joy. They use it in a variety of other products, but they are always ordering bajillions of bars of these, so of the clean of the cool clear water. And so it's actually fitting for an end of year bar. Okay, and on to the pour of this. Now this particular pour is going to be a lot of fun really. I'm going to need this bottom half to set up reasonably quickly because I'm going to sort of, I don't know, create like a divot in it, move the batter around in there and pour a layer of a dark blue with, you know, craggy bits and stuff. And then a layer of a mid blue and then a lighter blue and then a lighter blue. After. You get it to do the difference between ocean and sky. And I will put in mica lines as I remember to put in mica lines. So, you know, don't get your hopes up for a lot of mica lines because I usually never remember to put them in. But I'm going to give it the old college try and try to remember. It's probably not going to happen. Now, as I've said before when I'm doing my first batch of anything, right? I'm, I do a guessy guess. I get the actual, well, geez, don't just slap that away all violently like you're mad at it. Nothing has happened in this pour yet. Why am I just pushing it away? Like, be gone with you, scale. That was actually more violent than it needed to be. And comically, it didn't move very far. So even me violent, I'm ineffective at being intimidating. Good to know. Anyway, so with this, I am going to do a beach scene. And I want everything to set up nicely in between layers so I can continue to kind of sculpt and mold and do all the things. That is where I started this conversation. I'm going to continue on because I finally found my train of thought again and I could have paused and just remembered and then started recording again when I did. But that's not my style. Hello. I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. So with this, as with all of my first designs, I'm sort of guessing at how many ounces I want in each layer. And granted, it's an educated guess at this point because I have been doing this for so long that I have a pretty good idea of what like nine ounces of soap looks like design-wise up a bar. And so it's reasonably educated, but it's not fully precise. And so I do get the scale out for that and weigh it out and make note of, you know, how many ounces I poured off and whatnot to help with me with my final design notes. So if someone did have to come along and make a bar again, because as I've talked about before, I have a standing rule. Whoever designs it has to make it forever and ever and ever, unless it's something that's in the line permanently. And then we all have to learn the design of whoever, you know, whatever. This particular one, I will always make this because this is a limited edition bar, but I have to go make 300 more of it. And so I would like a reasonable-ish estimation of how many ounces are going to be in each section so I can then 
you know, multiply that by a factor of a lot so I can just make all 300 bars at once. And, you know, also to that decide how I even approach that. Because obviously when you're making that many bars at the same time, you are no longer looking at necessarily making just a giant batch of soap. All of the soap needed for all 300 of those bars, especially not in something like this when it has layers. Instead, you would be looking at doing smaller batches, you know, through the thing. So more like 18 pounds at a time. And so in order to get that measurement and, you know, weigh out. So you're making just the sand and then just the dark blue and then just the mint in their own separate batches. I hope this is making sense to you. I feel like I've shown you that in a bigger scale, I think at the end of 2020. So kind of midway through year one before, if you need a frame of reference. But anyway, for that reason, I do need to weigh things out so I kind of know what's going on. And then I make adjustments as needed once I cut the soap. And so if any of these areas look too shy or too proud, really, I will just modify those adjustments in my notes. And then that gives me something that I can then multiply and determine how much I need to do this in larger production. Now I am sort of playing with a version of the pointy layers technique with this. One of the reasons for that is, and you've been seeing me do it, I think I did it for a couple of the sister soap series bars that I didn't, I, I mean, I didn't even talk about the pour really with any of those because I just wanted to talk about random things in history. Thank you guys for letting me do that, by the way. Made me very happy. But anyway, I. One of the reasons for that is because I actually really found the pointy layers, just the motion of going back and forth like that. And then just, I, I enjoy that pour. I mean, I really do. And it's just a fun way to put soap in the mold. And in all actuality, I don't really give a shit whether I end up with pointy layers or not. I just like the actual motion of doing that with my hand over and over and over again because reasons. And so that was it. That's, and because of that, I ended up really liking this technique throughout the majority of 2021. So as we are closing out 2021, oh yeah, it's so messy. I asked the kids to bring me out a piece of muslin from the house and they came out with a piece of like lace essentially, that we had used for, it was just a scrap that was in the, you know, drawer of my fabric drawers, right? And we had used that particular cut of fabric. I mean, obviously not the one, it's not dirty lace is what I'm trying to get at. So don't get weird on me. That was what I meant. Anyway, they came out with a piece of lace that was used for a costume, for a Halloween costume. And I'm like, cool, let's see what this does. It doesn't, it's not a good idea. You, you should get some nylon or some muslin or something that is not that porous because I have gold finger everywhere, which is actually funny that I wiped it on my hand because it's like gold finger loves gold and I'll, never mind. I didn't wipe it on my, you know, actually I wiped it on my arm, but it was already on my hand. Gold finger. I had one of those guys. Anyway, I'm not very funny today, but that looks cool, doesn't it? It's fun. It's actually a really, and look for that interesting line in the second, third. This is a third blue, right? One, two, I think it's a third. So look to see if that ends up in any of the blue, the third from the bottom blue. So the second from the top, whatever. Just look to see if there's any weird gold mica things hanging out in the bar anywhere. Really? Because that pointy layers thing sure did press and move those, uh, well, what should have been a mica line, but really just ended up being kind of piles of mica around. But also that's cool. That's also really cool because we're building the ocean. Oh, and where that is actually, that might be the ocean. That might be where the ocean is moving into the sky blue. Yeah. So it might look like a, like a crashing wave or 
insert appropriate ways to describe waves here. I don't know. I don't know. I'm tired, guys. My brain is not working. I feel like my brain hasn't really fully worked since like September, and that actually makes sense because tis the damn season, and I have said that a million times, but it's true. This time of the year for all people that own businesses, especially, you know, businesses that have a product, this is an insane time. And this year has been even more insane because you know, we have the everything shortage going on and a lot of products that we're used to just getting without problems, we have problems getting. And for those that we don't have problems getting, they're really expensive. And even if neither one of those things are true, shipping prices have gone up, shipping times have been extended. Everything is just cuckoo bananas across the board. And yeah, another bouncing with the camera. I talked about it before. Mr. Soap and Clay doesn't have time to, you know, hang up my harness on the on the ceiling and help me out with the actual angle so I don't have to worry about it for my camera. And we might have time in January, but we don't have time right now. So the bouncing, I'm sorry. It's all a, it's a thing. It's like literally just a tripod that I'm working around right now. And that's really quite difficult to do. And also as a result, when you walk, especially because the new studio floors are so squishy and beautiful and perfect, like we put extra padding underneath them to make sure under the, under the wood to make sure that the standing for, you know, 14 hours a day was not going to be, you know, bad on the back or the feet or, you know, the sole, like the literal sole, but also the soles of the feet it's it's bouncy in here so you make the slightest movement and things bounce and so you know very sensitive cameras will also do so when they're just hanging out on a tripod not the point of any of this check out my weird pink seashells they're gonna be cute let's go to the cut and see what this all looks like after a good sea pop and gel Okay, and on to the cut. And my melt and pour little seashells did not melt. And that looks like a cool landscape just in and of itself. So already we're doing a good job here. Like we're, we are already cooking with gas with this guy. I have very, very high hopes for this bar. And it better be great because this is my birth month bar. And so, you know, if it is great, it's my birthday. We're going to party like it's my birthday. It's not my birthday. That's cute. See, look, and like the little, the little gold thing up there, that's the difference between the sky and the, the water. That's kind of where the, the gradation, you know, goes. That's gorgeous. I love that. I love that for all of us. Isn't that just so super pretty? I think so. I think yes. And the swoops and the differences with all of the, the, the sand and the, come on guys. That's a pretty beach bar. Can you believe that this is the first time I've ever actually made a beach scene? How many times have you seen beach soaps in, you know, the Facebook forums and stuff? So cute. The little gold mica lines like hitting it looks like waves peaking or capping or something. And the sunshine hitting it and creating the difference between. I think that worked out really beautifully. Yeah, we see beach themed soaps all the time, right? And I've never actually made one. But I decided to do it because that's the time of the year when I was a kid that we would always actually go to the beach. We would properly take our vacation in June. Can't do that now. The Soap and Clay Kids lists are actually in school until almost the end of June. And so that's really weird to me. And I, I feel like they don't get as long of a summer break as we used to growing up. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that means that they're learning more. That's cool. Those bars really are cool though. That's very pretty. And the cool clear water for all of that, it's obviously very fitting for the beach and ocean scene. And we got the sand in it, so it's also an exfoliant and the little flecks of the titanium dioxide that I put in it to lighten up the final two for the sky worked perfectly. That's a pretty bar of soap. As a June baby, 
I approve of all of that. But, you know, whatever. I, I guess it doesn't super matter whether or not I approve. It's whether or not the customers like it. But the customers are going to love this. And actually, that's not true. Customers don't like it. Doesn't matter. I'll use all 312 of these soaps. I'm just kidding. I don't take that many showers. My Facebook handles, I don't even use soap. So based on something like that, must mean that I never bathe at all, right? So I'd never get thrown. It's all a joke. I definitely use soap. You see me. You get it. Anyway, that is day 160. That is the June soap for the 12 months of soap set line thing. And yes, we have more bouncing cameras. And I really should stop drawing attention to it. And I should really, really stop apologizing for it because there's nothing that can be done right now. Look how pretty those bars are. Ultimately, I do think I like the little shells on top. I don't really know about the pink with it, but if I had picked a better mica that really had some sort of shimmer to it that would exist in the Mountain Pour Soap, I think they would have been a little bit cleaner, a little bit better. But overall, just that little hint of pink, that works too. So either way, the bar itself, super stunning. Obviously, big, beautiful scent. If you haven't ever worked with Cool Clear Water from Nature's Garden and you're into like the oceany scents, get that one. It's very, very good. And it's a pretty good dupe for that old cool water cologne thing that they used to sell. I don't know if they still sell it. But yes, that is the June bar, and I think it's stunning. If you are interested in any of these soaps, I highly recommend you go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Go get the newsletter at the website at soapandclay.com because 10 days of thanks is upon us, and we will be giving away sets of these on one of the days of 10 days of thanks. So make sure to be on the lookout for that. For those of you who are subscribed, hey Sudzers, I'm seeing that you guys are going over to the site and signing up for the newsletter. So good on you. I hope you guys get to score some freebies during the 10 days of thanks. That's coming up really fast. And I appreciate you having joined me for another day of 365 days of soap. I'm out of here for two day, but I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of soapy fun. Bye.